This video is going to step you through making a mat ID pass in Katana or an AOV for your scene. It's not just for mat IDs, it's also sort of intended to point you in the right direction for creating all the other types of AOVs you may need for your production. And you'll be able to go from this video onto the documentation or maybe the forums for your renderer and uh, get the correct uh, settings and nodes or get some help there. Uh, so to get map IDs working in Katana we need to address three different areas in our graph. We need to define the channels and AOVs, so the primary output and the channels, and I'll get to that in a sec. We need to feed in map ID, Pixar map ID nodes into our materials that we want to define as a color. And we also need to define the mat IDs against our objects using our PRMAN object statements. So we need to tag the objects, the shader, and we also need to create the channel. So firstly, uh, I'll show you how I've created the channel and output here. So this is two nodes. The first one is a render output to find node. These are the same as uh, the one we used before. That one, sorry. Render, I'll put define. It's just this one. So it's the same as the type of node that we used down here to define where our beauty render was going to go. I'll just stop this render. Uh, and that node, we pop, give it a name. For, we give a name to the output, uh, which can be anything, but I usually keep it the same as the channel just to keep confusion. The channel is the name that will be uh, extracted out of the render man network, mat ID zero. And then we just put our uh, location type to file just like before, and we put our file path in there of wherever we, got, we want the sequence to go. The channel node here is a PR man output channel to find and you'll also see an Arnold and a V-Ray version of these that's very very similar. So with these we specify the name of the channel and the type whether it's a, a color or a float or point or whatever. If we're doing like a z-depth render uh, that might be a float uh, but if we're doing a, a color one like this we need it to be color or varying color. So uh, this channel we define here is actually what makes it appear in this, in this list, so mat ID 0. So we need both of those nodes connected in. I've just grouped up all my AOVs in a single group and uh, put them in. Uh, these can easily be copy pasted into other scripts. So once you, this is one of those things that when you've, done, when you've done it once you can save it out as a template. The second part we're going to do is in the materials themselves. So this varies a little bit depending on the type of shaders you're using and it took a bit of research to work out how to do it with the PXR surface because uh, it's a little bit new at the time of uh, recording. Uh, the input at the bottom called utility pattern, we need to connect a PXR mat ID node to this. So this is a PXR shading node, a PR man shading node and we convert that to a mat ID. So I'm going to open that and just type mat and grab that. So with the mat ID node, so here's the one I've prepared earlier just here. Um, so with this node we choose which mat uh, channel it's going through and give it a color. This is my grub material so I've just popped it onto there and made it red and that's all we need to do there. But you'll just see on my other materials I've got in my master scene here um, look I've got the log and it's got the same thing a utility pattern going in. If you're still using Pixar Disney which I see a lot of people using that uh, you use the input AOV channel in the same sort of way. So you go through and you do that for sets of materials. If we had uh, more than three things to specify in here uh, that's where we would need to start using multiple channels. So we can have multiple uh, MAD ID outputs, three for each one, one, two, three, four, three times seven uh, types of uh, mats we can make for compositors. So you can scale this up with uh, RenderMan quite easily. For now we're just doing three. 
So on the objects, so that's the second part done. The third part is setting our object settings. Now, when we did group stacks, I think back in the material assign video, uh, we, we made a, a material assign group stack. Uh, this is one of the times where I've done a different type of group stack. I did a, a mat ID uh, or, a, or a object statements group stack to be more precise. And I've dragged them in to combine the nodes in here. So that's why this node looks a little different because it's a group. It's initially a group stack video, a group stack node. So uh, in here, what we need to do is make a object statement. I've called it mat ID zero, and set the parameter layout to advanced, and that lets us set some custom attributes in the rib include field here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So what we need to type in rib include is attribute user in quotation quotation mark color space mat id zero and one zero zero. So this is saying that this particular object is part of the red channel. Red, green, blue for the vector numbers there. And the same for a green and the same for a blue. And in all of these we have CEL statements. So this allows me just to group up objects together. I've just chucked all the chucked all the blue objects in I want, the green and so on and so on. So uh, coming out of there, once they're connected, we can do a render and start uh, previewing our mat ID. So that's the, the setup that we need, those three different areas. So the, the output channels and uh, render output define, rod node, the materials and the object settings. So if you ticked all of them off, that should work. The render settings node has this interactive outputs pull down, which probably is just going to be set to all uh, by default. You can actually choose a mat ID, and that's how I, at the start of this video, how I was live rendering this uh, mat ID pass over here. I was able just to test that that's working. Once, once you've proved that works, I'll just set it back to all or just primary, and then um, I can do a dis render and it will save out for every for every uh, render output define I'll have I'll have an image sequence on disk and everything works so that's a uh, mat ID pass for use in render man but you'll find this as I've said a few times you'll find it similar in in different applications as well to give you a bit of an idea how they vary I'll show two other things just at the end of the video um, the Z channel to find here, we needed to add some extra parameters. So just note that this you can pull down and add extra things to the channel. So you can add different types of uh, attributes to specify certain things to get it rendering correctly. Um, I've got the wrong filter on this one actually, um, so that's actually good I can show. Um, we're sourcing from a float Z value, so that helps it get, get the right information from the camera I believe. Uh, and the filter we want to set to Z min for a Z pass. So we can actually dictate how the image is filtered in that pass as well. And there's quite a big list there, um, depending on what type of passes. Um, if you're in this level of rendering and setup, you'll probably know what filter you need. Uh, otherwise, check some, check some uh, documentation. There's also a lot of uh, uh, settings and nodes hidden in, for render man in the denoise uh, groups that are available as a, as a built-in macro inside of your install of Katana. You've got the PRMAN denoise channel define and the render output define. You can learn quite a bit from just looking at these uh, and looking at how they've set them up. Or like I did for, for some of them, just copy paste them into your graph. Uh, and uh, do your best to learn from them. So uh, that, that can be quite handy as well. So hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.